Hey there, my name is Memo, this is my channel House Planty Goodness, and this essentially is a place that I like to geek out and talk about my big passion, which is, as you might be able to see behind me, tropical houseplants. I'm currently in my conservatory, which I've dubbed the Hot House, where I host most of the plants in my collection. And as I've always mentioned with this, drop a like if you like this video, it tells me that you like videos like this, I'll create more of them in the future. And if you like this content generally, consider subscribing. Every week I'll bring out two or three videos. So yeah, without further ado, let's dive into today's topic, which is one of leaf yellowing. And I'll bring this plant in a bit closer. This is my Peperomia pixie. And you might be able to see some of the yellowing at the very bottom of this plant here. Just before I go into the yellowing, I'd say this is probably one of the last peperomias that I've got left in my collection. Peperomias and me don't get on too, too well, but this is the last one of the few ones that has actually survived. And the reason for that, even though the foliage might not be the most striking thing in the world, this very kind of simplistic green foliage that is there on this plant. But if you've ever got a chance to find this plant in so, um, in a greenhouse or a plant shop, definitely check it out. It's really cool because even though it's quite simple and green at the top, underneath, try running your fingers underneath the leaves and it's got this really soft fuzziness. It's a bit like a baby bunny. <laughs> it's one of these plants that is very, very, very tactile. So if you like things like that, if you like plants that are quite tactile, definitely want to look into. But going into yellowing, the first type of yellowing that I want to talk about is arguably one that's a bit odd with this plant, and you'll get it with some plants. It's yellowing when the plant is underwatered, and I'll bring it up again so you might be able to see the yellowing that's being caused at the bottom there. And those leaves at the very bottom have been there and have been yellow for about a year now. And originally I thought it's because I was overwatering which is one of the usual indications for yellowing in leaves. But in this case, for this plant, and surprisingly, especially for a succulent peperomia, it wants to be on the heavier moist side, not sapping wet, which to me might imply, and again, I don't know whether or not this is just this plant in my care. I don't know if other people who have got the peperomia pixie can corroborate this. If you can, drop a comment down below. I would love to hear this. Um, but essentially, it would give me an indication that maybe this peperomia survives in wetter conditions, even though you wouldn't assume it from usually if there's pubescence and it's that fuzziness of the leaves. And if there are thick leaves as well, generally it means that it can take less watering. But some plants kind of go against what is reasonable or what you see from a lot of other plants. So this is one of them. But this is an example I want to bring up. Generally speaking, the yellowing that you'll get from underwatering will tend to go towards crispy and brown uh, after you've left it there for a while. And that just gives you an indication that maybe you need to start watering that plant a bit more frequently. Now, I'll put this plant down and I don't have the other examples. There's too many plants for me to start pulling off shelves, but I'll put an image of the, on the side here and I'll talk about that uh, type of yellowing next. So you might be able to see an image here. And this is an example of more traditional yellowing in, that you'll get in leaves. And this is when the leaves are, the old leaves essentially, and they are just getting ready to basically depart from the plant and release some of that energy back into the plant to help provide some energy for the new growth at the top of the plant. And I say this because this is something that I've actually read about and try, I've been trialing for the last year. A lot of people will cut out yet, sorry, the yellow leaves off their plants because they offend their aesthetic sensibilities. They don't like seeing the yellow leaves and that's completely fine. If it's causing you that much of an issue, then do get rid of the yellow leaves. What I have found makes a bit of a difference to kind of improve the, the, um, the speed and the amount of growth that you'll get in the plant, but not to a huge level. And essentially what I've done is I've always left, for the last year, I've left the leaves, the yellowing leaves, the lower yellowing leaves on the plant until they brown off and drop off on their own. Because I read somewhere that um, what the plants are doing is they're reabsorbing some of those sugars into the actual plant itself to then release those sugars out into the new growth. And as I said, 
there is an improvement. There has been more growth and there's been slightly faster growth, nothing huge. So this is what I'm saying. You're probably not gonna cause that much of an issue or you're not gonna hinder your plant that much. But if you wanna give them that extra little bit of a boost, consider leaving the yellow leaves on there. Cause in nature, there's not people walking around in forests and jungles and kind of going, oh, that, that, that lower leaf on that plant somewhere here in the jungle is really not good. I'll take it off. It will just happen. They'll get knocked off. Potentially some of them might get knocked off from animals or the weather or things like that. But the majority of the leaves that are yellow and their older leaves on the plant will just eventually reabsorb all their sugars and then drop off as brown leaves. So that's the other type of yellowing, which you will get naturally with most plants. Do not panic. The other one is overwatering. Now, overwatering is the big one that everybody worries about. And with this one, I don't actually have an example. Hopefully I'll find an old picture somewhere. I've just been really fortunate at the moment that I don't have any plants that are suffering from overwatering. And that's not humble brag. It's just timing wise. I don't have any at the moment because and let me tell you something. If you're just starting off on kind of a house plant or a planting journey generally, do not worry about these things. Even all the rest of us that have been doing this for years and we've got big collections, we have all overwatered plants. We have all caused issues to our plants. It's normal, it will happen even with the most amount of experience and even with all the gadgets and gizmos, I've got apps to, to help me control uh, how much watering I'm giving to some plants. I've got my moisture meter, all of these things. But even still, sometimes if it's a plant that you're not that familiar with, you could still have issues with their watering. And what is happening when you'll get leaves that are yellow higher up on the plant and they'll start multiplying quite quickly. You'll get more and more leaves that are turning yellow. A lot of the times that's a sign of overwatering. So overwatering and the thing that is happening there generally because of the overwatering is that root rot is happening. And if it's moving at an exorbitant rate, there is a high likelihood that you might lose that plant. What I would suggest now is you might have to stress it out a bit more. You're still going to take that risk. You still could possibly lose the plant, but there might be your kind of chance to save it. If a lot of them are going yellow and a lot of them are going yellow quite fast, you're going to need to take it out of its pot, take it out of the soil and see what the damage is to the roots. You might have lost some of the roots or the majority of the roots, or you might have lost all of the roots to root rot. At that point, remove all the rotting roots and, and probably a bit more. So if the, if the root is, say, this long and the rot only goes to here, don't cut it here, cut it there. Take a bit more off as well, just to make sure that none of that rot has gone up that you can't see because this part of the root might look healthy but the rot might be on the inside. So take a bit more essentially just to be safe. And then what you'd want to do, especially if you've lost all the roots at that point is you're pretty much starting from scratch at that point with the plant. You're going to treat it as if you're propagating it essentially from the beginning. Um, what you'd want to do generally is get rid of at least two, th especially if it's quite a large plant and it's still got quite a lot of leaves on it. Get rid of about two thirds of the leaves because what is happening at the moment, if you leave all those leaves on there and there's no roots at the bottom, that plant could potentially be trying to a maintain those leaves with no roots, which means that it's going to struggle even if you give it the best conditions and you put it in water or perlite or sphagnum and all these things and it's getting the, the moisture that it's needing. It's never really going to grow roots or grow upwards because what essentially is happening at that point is that that plant is using all of its energy, all of this resource to keep all of those leaves alive and doing nothing else other than that. So chop some of these leaves off put it in your propagation material, water, perlite, as I said, sphagnum, whatever one you're comfortable with, and let it root out in its own time. When it starts rooting out, after it starts rooting out and you repot it, you'll then start seeing some new foliage, but you are starting from scratch potentially at that point, which is probably not what a lot of you want to hear, but it's a learning experience. We've all been there. We've all had to do this. I had a plant that was growing really, really large, and this was the Philodendron Splendid that I've talked about previously. And I had to start from scratch because it pretty much lost all the roots and I hadn't realized it wasn't actually giving me all of those indications at that point. So bear that in mind. And the last little bit about yellowing that I want to talk about, and I'll bring an image of this up here, is edema. So leaf edema. And this, <laughs> still struggling with this one. I still haven't found many people that have got any experiences that were helpful as in like they're a lot of the people that I've spoken to are all struggling the same way that I am because they find loads of articles online 
and videos talking about what edema is, but nothing about how to prevent or how to treat edema. So edema is essentially, and you'll be able to see in the picture here, is when certain parts of the leaf will start going yellow and essentially what's happening there is because this, the water is getting sucked up really quickly into the leaf, that is then causing the cell walls to burst. So that is essentially what edema is. The frustrating thing about edema is there's two things that cause it. One is consistent underwatering and what then happens is when you flush it eventually, when you do kind of give it some water, it sucks up all of that moisture up really quickly. And because it's doing that, it's sending it to the cells too quickly and these cells are bursting essentially because imagine like this influx of water coming into them or moisture and they, they burst. So that's one way of um, getting edema in plants. The second way of getting edema in plants is by consistently overwatering. So you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. So edema is one of those interesting ones. Again, I will plead to anybody who's out there who's struggled with edema and you've got any experience of things that you've done as treatment have worked or uh, what you've done to prevent it. Because to me, those two ways of the plant getting edema are contradicting. So what do you do at that point? Um, do let me know in the comments down below. I would love to know. But yeah, I think that's everything I want to say about this video. I don't want to ramble on for too, too long. If you've got any questions, comments, drop them down below as usual. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Hopefully I shall see you here soon. And yeah, have a great rest of the day. Thanks. Bye.